Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of the No Georgia Spotlight. I'm your host, Jack Ellis. We're glad to have you with us this week as every week. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Caduceus Medicine, J. Franklin Automotive, and WMUV here at Mercy University. Let me hasten to add that the views expressed on the No Georgia Spotlight, not, not necessarily those of Mercy University or WMUV, they're strictly those of the host and the producer of this program. In the spotlight this week, we have some people who are doing great work in this town, been doing it for a long time, not only in this town, but in the region. From the Mill Georgia, this is the Central Georgia Technical College, and we have joining us today Dr. Craig, Craig Jackson, who is a VP for Student Affairs, and Ms. Brenda Brown, who is the Vice President for Adult Education. We'd like to welcome them to the spotlight. I welcome you to our program. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. You know, this is this TV station is owned by an education institution, uh, Mercy University, and, and we try to have as many people from the education community to own as we can. My very first guest was Dr. Jones from Bibb County School System. Okay. The second was President Underwood. And now we have the real educators from the Central <laughs> Georgia Technical College. And I mean that in a real sense. Uh, tell me, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Jackson, Give me a little bit of background on it. We have the annual report. We'll talk about that. And okay. a thumbnail sketch, if you will. A little bit of background of Central Georgia Technical College. We have merged. We've gotten to this point. Give me a little background. How did we get here? Well, the new Central Georgia Technical College came about in 2013 when Middle Georgia Technical College, which is located in Warner Robins, uh, merged with Central Georgia Technical College, and we became, quote, the new Central Georgia Technical College. We serve actually 11 counties. Uh, in the middle Georgia area, we have three full campuses, uh, which includes the main campuses in Warner Robins, uh, the Macon campus, of course, and then we have a campus in Milledgeville. And then along with that, we have several centers uh, to include uh, Crawford Center, Monroe Center, Putnam Center, uh, Peach uh, Center uh, as well. So we're all over uh, middle Georgia. So 11 counties? Yes, 11 That's a counties. lot of people. How many students are we talking about? Uh, Enroll at any given time. As, well, as, as of now, this, but this past fall, uh, we're, we're a little over uh, 8,200 uh, students uh, for the fall semester. So that's larger than Mercer, larger than Central Georgia Technical mm -hmm. College, I mean, Central Middle Georgia State, right. uh, and Fort Valley State almost combined. Well, I'll put it like this. We're, we're, we're the largest public uh, institution in the Middle Georgia area well, great. as far as enrollment. Right. Great. Uh, we're going to get back to you, uh, Dr. Jackson. We're going to talk about adult education because I remember way, way back when, when I first came home, the big thing was the adult literacy program that would, and two or three people were doing it. I understand now it's all been moved in-house and you all have the sole responsibility for adult education, if you will, people trying to get the education. That is correct. Uh, we provide adult education services to individuals who are 16 years old and older who are not enrolled in public school system. And we provide them with an opportunity to get their high school equivalency or their GED, and we teach English as a second language. Well, you know, that's obviously a big job when you hear about, you know, like when I was talking to Dr. Jones, we talked about the high school dropout. We know that there are a lot of people without high school diplomas, and thank God that Central Georgia Tech is there. But I've heard that high school students can even be enrolled at Central Georgia Tech the college while they're in high school and get dual, get credits. Is that that's separate and apart from the adult education? Mm -hmm. Can a student enroll at Central, enroll at your school mm -hmm. at the same time and get credits? Correct. Uh, it's, it's called our dual enrollment program, mm -hmm. which is one of the fastest growing programs in the state of Georgia throughout uh, the technical college system. Uh, but we have uh, over 1,800 uh, high school students who actually receive college credit uh, from us. And in that same aspect, along with Ms. Brown's program with adult ed, we also do it with adult ed, meaning you, while you're working towards your uh, GED, you can also take college uh, courses and get received credit for that as well. So you, you can finish your uh, GED and along receive some uh, college uh, credit for that as well. Well, we know that the workforce, I know when I was the mayor, we knew that we know just in, intuitively, and then I went out there, knew that without this component, this mm -hmm. training component, that we couldn't have gotten some of the industries that we got here, that we have here now. And I look at your annual report, and it's a big one, y'all. Okay, I'm not going to read it all to you, but I'm going to hold it up, that it is 
very impressive as to what they accomplished in 2019, and 2019 is still going on. Mm -hmm. Give us some of the highlights of, uh, of this report, if you will, the, you know, how many people you've touched, what areas you touch them in, and what's the trend going forward, the areas that you want to train people? Um, well, I, I, one of <laughs> uh, well, first of all, one of the things that we're most excited about, especially uh, uh, overall, uh, the purpose of going to college is to finish. Uh, we are the first technical college to reach uh, 4,000 graduates uh, in, in a year. And we have consistently in the past seven years been the largest uh, technical college graduate uh, throughout the system with averaging 3,000. We average 3,000 plus graduates every year. And this year we actually broke that in and went to 4,000. So we're very excited uh, about that. Uh, as you know, the technical college system in Central Georgia Tech, we have three components. And not only do we have credit, class. And not only do we have adult ed, but we also have an economic development piece, uh, which you were speaking of as far as training people and yeah. getting them to work. Uh, our economic development uh, area under the leadership of Ms. Uh, Griner um, is the largest uh, by far in training hours and in dollars in the, in the state system as well. So we do a lot. Any company that comes in the middle of Georgia area, uh, nine times out of ten, we're involved with that making sure that we provide the training and have the training available uh, for the workforce as well. Now, what about the adult, the students that's going back to school, the non-traditional students, mm -hmm. if you will? Do you funnel them into the job training, uh, job placement, or you just educate them and let someone else worry about the job, or is it a whole wraparound piece? It's a whole wraparound piece. With the new WIOA legislation that came out, uh, part of our work is to train individuals to go back to work and to get a livable wage. So what we do is, as Dr. Jackson mentioned earlier, we have our Accelerating Opportunities Program, which allows a person to come in without a high school diploma and be duly enrolled in the technical college and taking uh, high school equivalency classes. And these students can move right into a track uh, with the technical college and get a TCC, a technical certificate of credit, a diploma, or an associate's degree. Now, what about affordability? You know, I hear some people say I can get a Pell Grant. Others say I'll qualify for the HOPE at the Middle Georgia, uh, at Central Georgia Technical College. What most people are coming, are they coming out of pocket? We hear, we hear about student loans, how people leave college mm -hmm. with others. Well, how, how are most of your students uh, being funded? How are they uh, paying their tuition? Uh, mo most of our students are, are coming through some sort of a financial aid, whether it's uh, through the Pell, uh, whether it's through the HOPE grant, whether it's through the HOPE scholarship, which are two different things. Uh, actually, if you're a resident of Georgia, you can come in on the HOPE grant, uh, and that would take care of uh, if you're in a certificate or a diploma program. And it pays, basically, it used to be paid for everything now, it's about mm, 85, 86% of that that it pays for. But then Pell, normally for most students that come through us, uh, pick, uh, would pick that up as well. Mm -hmm. And we also, of course, do have uh, uh, student loans available for, for those students. But we also have a, a financial aid educator to try to encourage students that if you don't have to take a loan, don't take the loan. And if you do take a loan, don't take a full loan, just take a minimal amount so that you won't come out with, with, a, with a huge debt. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Brown, we know that the poverty rate in Mason is quite severe, mm -hmm. and most of the people living in poverty don't have an education, especially don't have a high school education. So is it, is, is it reasonable to ask a person who's already in dire straits trying to get an education to make them pay? Do you have, uh, or is, are there any provision for just giving an unforgivable scholarship that you don't have to pay it back? <laughs> well, fortunately, the adult education component is free to the students. Oh, good. <laughs> free to the students. We get uh, state and federal funds to provide it free. Now, there is a cost to actually take the test, which we do provide scholarships for that through our foundation. Mm -hmm. Do you track students? I know you try to get them jobs, but uh, the, how many are going once they get a GED, they went back at age 20 or something, how many will go in the military, how many will get a job, how many will, will go on to a court? Do you keep any yes. statistics? Yes, we do mean? keep track of how that. How are you doing in that regard? We're doing great. Um, most of our students get jobs, many of them get jobs before uh, they actually graduate because of the workforce training that we offer them. 
and because of the low um, unemployment, their jobs are plentiful so students can come in, improve their skills, get some training, and go to work. I recall when I was mayor, not to have a revision of history, but I took a trip to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, which is the materiel command and the, the superior command to Robbins. And I mm -hmm. met with the General Lex Lester Lyles, mm -hmm. who was that time a four-star general, African-American man. And he raved about, this was back in 2004, 2005, before mm -hmm. you had all this merger. And he said a lot of, why a lot of the work was coming here and wanted to continue here rather than going to Tinker and Oklahoma Hill and, and Utah was because of this college and your sheet metal uh, program, I guess you had. Correct. Yeah. Aircraft yeah. Yeah. Right. Is that still oh, one yeah. of the uh, bread uh, and butter? Ma pieces? Matter of fact, uh, just so to share, uh, it's expanded uh, because now, if you may not may be aware, the old Bowen building. Uh, now that is being uh, the airport. right. That is being dubbed now as uh, Robbins North, because uh, uh, the Air Force Base has moved a portion of their program uh, of their operation there, and along with us, we have our aircraft uh, sheet metal uh, there as well. So now our students are actually being trained within the same building that Robbins employees are working. So they actually are right there side by side and can literally get trained in there and ease on over as an internship over into uh, to, to the base as well. So another pathway uh, as far as employment. What I'm hearing that is very, has no reason for a person to fall through the crack anymore. If they miss it in high school, you're there to pick them up mm -hmm. and pass them off to go on and get a skill yeah, right. rather than to get education. So your intake, your recruitment, uh, we know the need is great. We mm -hmm. know what the dropout rate. Are you scratching the service, not just in Macon, but the entire Mills, Georgia area where you operate? Yes, we are. We probably serve about 10% of the people who actually need our services. Mm -hmm. So there's a great need uh, in the community to get the word out and for people to come on in and make that change. Now, what about capacity? You uh, let's say if everyone needed, and we know a lot of people, mm -hmm. we know the statistic. So I wake up one morning and say, we want to go to Central Georgia Technical College and get our GED. Come on. It won't be turned away. It will not oh, be no. turned away. No, 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 no. <laughs> not at all. As a matter of fact, I think the last thing we looked at, we actually teach, and a lot of that is due to Ms. Brown's program, we're actually teaching in 55 different addresses in the middle of Georgia uh, uh, yeah. area. Uh, I mean, she, mm -hmm. she teaches different zip codes, uh, addresses, addresses, just addresses, addresses. right? Yeah. Right. Because, for instance, you know, she may have, you may have a church. Mm -hmm. that, uh, okay. Oh, okay, fifty five different sites. Yeah, right. Oh, okay, right. 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 a lot. Yeah. Right. So, and I mean, now you provide the, the the students as well as the teachers, and the churches provide the space. I guess. Yeah, right. the churches right. provide the it space. It may be a church. I think you're doing something that the, one of the fire departments in Jones mm -hmm. County. I mean, so we're we're everywhere. Uh, the Buck Melton, mm -hmm. Buck Melton so building. We're, we're teaching. So we're we're all over Miller, Georgia. I know you're in East Macon over the Family Investment yes. Center over there. Right. Davis mm -hmm. Home. Yeah, a long time. A long time. Yeah. 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 I'm impressed. Now, but let's get back to this Hope Scholarship. Mm -hmm. Are they as stringent, stringent, if you will, with the qualifications to go into a technical college as they are going to the university? Otherwise, you got a 3.8 and all this stuff in order to get the whole scholarship. You mentioned two different scholarships. Right. I want you to explain mm -hmm. to me because I don't know the difference between the Hope Scholarship and the Hope Grant. Right. The scholarship is it's the same. It's, yeah. it's okay. for the requirement right. of, of a GPA. You have to have a, maintain a certain GPA or coming out of high school have a certain GPA, and you have to qualify for the Hope Scholarship to go anywhere. That where you you would be going uh, from that standpoint. The Hope Grant, which is based on just being a resident of Georgia, uh, there is no criteria no more than being a resident and being enrolled in one of our certificate programs or one of our diploma programs. So that's that's the difference in, in, in the two. Uh, uh, the Hope Scholarship, you do have to qualify by having a uh, uh, maintaining a 3.0 GPA or having a 3.0 GPA and maintain a certain GPA during the course of your work. But the whole grant is just truly just based on being a Georgia resident. And it's based on need? Uh, just based just, on what? Just being a Georgia resident, yeah. And, you, right. and when you say a grant, you don't pay it back? No, no, you, you don't pay that back. And, no. and the qualifications, being a Georgia resident, being in school, how, how is it very competitive? That grant, or uh, everyone can apply for it? You just, you just have to apply for it. If you're in school, I'm, you can apply, and what will keep you from getting it? 
Right. So why wouldn't anyone, why would people be getting Pell Grants, what I'm saying, if you can apply for that without well, qualification? Well, sometimes it takes effort. Sometimes people don't want to take the effort. Oh, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> so that, that may have something to do. And they used to say if you want to hide it, they put it in the book. <laughs> so so don't want, but, but it's uh, fine. Now, of course, it doesn't pay complete fare. That's why I say you still apply for that Pell Grant to cover that, that part portion that, that Hope doesn't, doesn't yeah. pick up. And that's what, that's what most people do. You know, I know this is not your belly week, but I'm a big sports fan. I didn't know that you had a team over there until recently. <laughs> My nephew went to uh, Metropolitan College and uh, played basketball, mm -hmm. and he came down here to play a game. I said, mm -hmm. who are you playing? He said, since Georgia Tech. Said, they don't have a basketball team. Uh -huh. And I went to the game out there on Rocky Creek Road, right. I think it was, when you had that gym mm -hmm. there. I think you've now moved. Yeah, we're on Anthony Road on now, Anthony as you would recall, the old ballot. The old ballot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're at the well, I didn't remember that, you know, because... <laughs> I, I'm a little older than you. I, I, I left Macon in 63, and we still had Ballard Hudson okay. Senior and Ballard Hudson Jr. Okay. down on Anthony Road. That was after oh, yeah. the integration that we got that one. Yeah. But well, I, I'm just so excited about this particular institution because mm -hmm. I know, in two, I used to be an Army recruiter mm -hmm. for 11 years, and I used to recruit young men and women all over the country. And I know how how important a skill, a technical skill, is. Mm -hmm. Everybody shouldn't have a four year degree. I'm not saying they shouldn't get one; they want one, but everyone doesn't need one. Mm -hmm. So, how many of your students are? What they said, we are coming here for career development and not necessarily looking for a four year degree. But you're saying they can go on to get a four year right. degree, and, and that's what makes us so unique because you do have that option. Uh, if, if if your goal is to get a four-year degree if you just want to come here strictly and, and take, a, a, as, as they call, core classes uh, with us to transfer out. You can do that. Uh, we have several articulation agreements uh, with every college uh, throughout uh, to include Mercer, Mercer uh, uh, Middle Georgia State, Fort Valley, Gordon College, uh, Georgia, Southwest. I mean, so it, pretty much any college you want to go to, our credit with transfer and several we have articulation agreement with whatever that particular program is, the actual entire associate degree transfer, and you're going to that college uh, a, a, as a junior with two more years to receive your uh, bachelor's degree. So we have a lot of students that, that have, that's their ultimate goal to do that. Then you have those students, again, that they're coming there strictly for a skill set, whether it's uh, welding, whether it's uh, auto mechanic, whether it's something in aircraft. Uh, maintenance of aircraft structure, where it's cosmetology, any of the health fields, uh, R RN, LPN, any of those uh, courses, you have students that come down looking for that, and that's that's what they that's what they uh, uh, come to accomplish, and, and that's what they get, and they they go to work. And uh, speaking of, we, you mentioned about you know the numbers, uh, our, our career placement, we have a 97. Uh, percent uh, wow. placement rate mm -hmm. uh, for students who uh, uh, complete their their programs and, and going to work. I know when I was a mayor, we used to send a lot of students to have to the workforce investment. The mm -hmm. old W I A. -A. Is that still? Right. Is that still? It's W I O A. W I O A. Okay, right. but the, the program is still, it's still in existence. Right. right. Ms. Jackson, your responsibility is just astronomical to solve the problem. I'm not saying we're going to put all the young children to solve all the poverty problems in this town and education problems. And when I say this town, I mean the Middle Georgia mm -hmm. area. Uh, because this is a regional approach here. But um, how can we get the word out more? What can we do? I know you probably have a budget that you advertise and do outreach, but what can the community at large, if you're speaking to the community at large and wanting them to, hey, we're here to help solve this problem that we have, income inequality and everything else, starts with an education. What would you say to them? Well, I would say if they know of anyone that needs their high school diploma or needs some skills training to support them in coming back to school. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, many of our students need additional support. They need encouragement. They need mentoring. So if we can get them to encourage people to come back at their church or organization, even if they don't need the service, they know someone who does. And usually word of mouth is how we grow our program. Mm -hmm. Someone comes in and they're successful. Also, we are available to come out and speak to any organization for recruitment of students and share with them some of our success stories. Mm -hmm. well, I think one thing that 
especially the older students had some of them had the stigma of going back to school with young kids and they're 25 or 30. But what you're saying is that they're going to have peers in there. Yes. That there's no stigma. That everyone is trying to better themselves so that they shouldn't fear that. That is absolutely mm -hmm. correct. And we have such uh, caring staff and teachers. They're there to assist and to encourage the students to complete. Uh, back to the, the, the customized training. Now, we just had um, uh, Amazon mm -hmm. here and all the distribution. That's what we are. We're, problem, we're becoming a distribution. We were a manufacturer. We're becoming more. Dis we still have some manufacturing. Mm -hmm. right. uh, Robbins and some other places, mm -hmm. precision manufacturing. But for the most part, we are doing a lot of distribution now, with mm -hmm. Amazon being one of them. Or do you have a training program for warehousing as well built into your uh, logistics? As logistics. Matter, I mean. matter of fact, we have logistics, and uh, we hadn't had the opportunity to mention, but at our vector, uh, we have a vector building. If you're familiar with that, uh, for our veterans, it's, it's a, a it's in locating one room. It's just a resource for veterans, not just only for veterans. This program. Right. It, it, okay. it was, it's actually a veterans resource center. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and, and it's not just for for Central Georgia Tech. It's for anywhere in the state. You know, outside. So if you're a veteran and you come there uh, seeking resources, they have, they have several different agencies in there to just help the veteran, number one. That's the first thing, to help the veteran. But in, in line with that, we also offer some classes and some programs out there. Of course, CDL is one that, that is offered out there. Logistics will be offered out there as well to help veterans and to support the veterans uh, uh, throughout our country. So we're there to serve them as well. And that program is doing extremely well. And we have people coming from all over the country coming just to view this, the only one of its kind in the country. And so people are coming to view that as well, uh, because that is a, a great program for veterans. Yeah. You all have such great story to tell. Do you have an audio-visual department that you train people in radio and television? Do you have any, I know they have that at the Career Center over there at the Hutchins, mm -hmm. but do you have anything we, like we that? We do, yes. Do you, do you, do you have a, an outlet, a channel that you can put it on? Uh, my PR folks over there have to know. <laughs> well, I, okay, well, well, what, what, I wanted, what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. the president has said to me mm -hmm. and the, the manager of the studio okay. that he wanted more local programming. Okay. There's a 24-hour station, Channel 112, which the French you watch it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Good international news. Okay. But we don't have a lot of local programming. Okay. And he wants more local programming. I'm going to encourage your people, you, to, to get with them and get a program student produce it, but every week you can have your own weekly oh, that's great, great. Great. Central Georgia Tech. Right, that'll be a and you can record it wherever you want, record it here, and we'll give you a time slot to put it on the air on Channel 112. This came from President Underwood's mouth to mind that he wanted more local program. I can't think of a better one to have. Than, oh, uh, that, that, that would be wonderful. Thank we have you. so many stories. And, and I know. Just in this time, we're trying to tell you, you mentioned athletics. There. We had a basketball team, men and women, uh, who were back-to-back of the men, or uh, conference champions. Uh, but we also have men and women's cross-country team. We just uh, Our top run runner was out in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico a couple months ago because he made uh, uh, he won our conference and competed nationally. So, And we also have, we hadn't had opportunity to talk about, global initiatives. We do, yeah, we, we're do, gonna talk about we, do we do study abroad. We do study abroad. We have students that can go. They've gone to York, uh, to England, to Scotland to take classes and get that experience. And we're the first technical college to take dual enrolled students, high school students. Last year they went to Ireland. We were the first technical college to take high school students to a dual enrolled program out um, internationally where they did study abroad and received a humanities credit. Fantastic. Well, then I have one for you. <laughs> I serve as the Honorary Council General for Uganda. I met with uh, your president some time ago. Okay. And I'm on my way to the African Union at uh, Addis Ababa next week. And we want you to put Africa on your, especially Uganda and Ethiopia, on your place for students to study abroad. They're trying to build a very a first rate technical education program in Uganda. They have a difficult time doing it. Okay. The president's wife is currently serving as the Minister of Education, and she and I talked about partnership. Okay. We just created one with Mercer University, mm -hmm. with the medical school, mm -hmm. so we want to create one here as well. With, uh, well, you know, we're always looking to be uh, for opportunity being a trendsetter, so uh, we're <laughs> definitely looking to it. Well, great, great. Uh, we have about, uh, I guess, about three minutes left, from what I'm told, but we want to make sure that we make sure we cover everything here. You mentioned about the, and one other thing I want to mention, though, that you, uh, Ms. Brown, I just discovered 
that a senior citizen, like I am, I'll be 74 next week, mm -hmm. that a senior citizen can go to your school free at the state go to college, any college, uh, some friends of mine that make it, Fort Valley and that. Right. So I'm going to enroll there as a course I want to take it <laughs> at your school. And, okay. I, and you get it, and I've, I've used all my GI Bill, so I'll have it that way. But I understand senior citizens can get a free education. Is that, 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 that is true. It, it pays for your tuition. Tuition, yeah. Yeah, because fees now, that, that's, that's a little different, but, but it does pay for your tuition. Now, what are the fees? Let's see if I can <laughs> <do it. laughs> well, it depends on what, it, you, you know, your normal fees that, that, that you have, uh, uh, like your health fees and, and your student activity fees and those type fees. But, but trust me, you, you come, we, we, we can work it out. We, we won't have you paying unnecessary fees. So <laughs> if you don't need to pay them, we, we can work it out. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, we talked about that this is a school for non-traditional students as well as students coming right out of the high school, 17, mm -hmm. 18. 18 year olds. Um, what is the average age? Do you ever do that? Not in your program, yet, but adult education, we know will probably be skewing high. But do we have a lot of students going? You know, a lot of times you get out of school, you go to four year right. college, you realize it's not for you, and you, and yeah. you come back. Yeah, our, our average age now is, uh, is for, for, for long as it was 28, it's dropped now a little bit to 27. Uh, and that has a lot to do with our dual enrollment students coming in. So it has dropped. So it's 27 is, is the average age uh, of our students that are at Central Georgia Tech. And what about the, the, the business community? Some of them will pay their students' way. They said, we need you to, you know, ratchet up your skills. Right. So we is, is there a program you have tied in with the business community, the chamber, where people have been... Uh, individual companies can send their people there and they pay you? Well, they can. We usually it's just a third-party pay, basically. You okay. have a lot of companies that say, hey, they'll pay for, for, their, for their employees to, to come and get educated or, or things like that. And, and that's just uh, uh, basically an agreement with the, the employer, and then they would just decide to, to make the payment. And it's just a third-party pay. Mm -hmm. Now, this program is going to air the first week. We are here the first week of January. We're airing this program. Okay. And your school starts... The 7th of January? The 7th, uh, January the 7th. The day mm -hmm. after my birthday. So okay. it starts on the 7th. Mm -hmm. So how do you, the intake starts where? You have to, when, when registration? It's been started. After the 7th, can people get in if they walk in on the 8th, 9th? Yes, because what we do now is what we call second sessions or mini sessions. So within a full session, uh, we have a, a second session that will start in March. Okay, then you'll go from there into summer. And then you do the same. Uh, you have a summer session. Then we'll fall. You have the same. So, so you, basically, what you're doing is you have a, a session within a session, a, what we call a mini session or a second session. So basically, you can come at any time. Miss Brown, you can come every day. Yeah, okay. we, <laughs> we have open <laughs> enrollment. Open enrollment. Open enrollment. Open enrollment. You don't have to yeah. wait to yeah, January. You know, yeah, you, you can come every day. Every day and, 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 and actually start. Mm -hmm. And and uh, with, with us, but registration and all that is ongoing mm -hmm. uh, because quite naturally you have to complete the application. Uh, if you do your financial aid, that's a process itself. You have to do your financial aid application and, and, and get feedback on that uh, before you can move on. So your budget, uh, we have a little minute left. I want to know what's the economic impact just of your school, the budget, professors, and tuition. What's the overall budget? Like, we run a $55 million $55 budget. $55 million. That's a lot of money. <laughs> no economy. matter how you look at it, that's yeah. a lot of money. That's how much money. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. the economic impact is greater than that, but you know, 55 right. million right. when you turn it over. And, four and, times. and just to give you a, a sort of because a lot of people think that we're a state organization that it's a 55 million dollar budget that the state just sends us 55 million dollars. Okay, we receive about 21 million from the state, so that's wow. a gap there. So I mean, we, we have to make that up. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the last 30 seconds. <laughs> we got 30 seconds. What would you like to say to the people? Well, I would like to say uh, for the people to come out and come back to school, get your high school diploma. You can duly enroll in our workforce programs. You can get certifications and forklift, OSHA, yeah. and well, get that GED first. Get, first. get that GED. Well, right. thank you all so much for thank joining you. us here on the Middle Georgia thank Spotlight. You. We've been talking with Dr. Dr. Jackson and Ms. Uh, Brenda, Brenda Brown. Uh, Vice President out of Central Georgia Technical College. We'd like to ask you all to like us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube at the Mill Georgia Spotlight. And I want to wish each and every one of you a very, very happy New Year 2020. It's here. Get an education. <laughs> Central Georgia Technical College is here for you. Until next week, I'm your host, Jack Ellis. Goodbye. <laughs>